All right, Brady, I've got a magic trick for you. I want you to think of any number between 1 and 100. Just think of it in your head. All right, picture it in your head. Try and transmit it to me. Yeah? Yep, doing it. Yeah, you're doing, you're doing something weird with your neck, Brady. What's that? I'm pushing, <laughs> right, I'm pushing okay. it towards you. I'm pushing the number out of my brain right. into your brain. Okay. I thought you'd turn it to some sort of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of reptile or something. But, uh, okay. Right. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take, I want you to look at this list. There's a lot of numbers written down on here. Yeah. I want you to think of your, think of your number again. Yeah. I want you to tick every row that it appears in. Okay. You're going to have to hold the camera. Oh, bloody hell. This is, oh my God, this is an expensive piece of kit. How do I know I'm pointing in the right direction? Every one where one's in? Yeah. Okay. I'll make sure you um, don't miss any. Okay. Otherwise it'll ruin it. And, and, and try to transmit it to me. Your arm's in the way. <laughs> I can't. Uh... Don't, you point, don't point to it. No, I'm not. No, okay, yeah. I'm quite impressed people with this. I think I think I've got them all. Oh, well, super far dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wrong. Okay. Right, you take that back. Okay. All right. Okay. Now to keep keep transmitting that thought thought to me. <laughs> right. Yep. Mm. Let me think about it. I think it's got a seven in it and a two in it. Is it seventy two? Yes. Yeah, there you go, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. So, are you impressed? Mmm. What do you mean, mmm? How many numbers there are there? Yeah, okay, yeah. You should, I mean, be, yeah. You should be impressed. Uh, yeah. All right, let me tell you the maths, and maybe you'll be impressed by the maths of it. Okay. okay. Right, okay, now let's have a look at the numbers. Now, if you look at these numbers in this little, this little thing, yeah. right, the first number in each row, every single one of them is Fibonacci. One, two, three... 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, and 89. Do you remember the Fibonacci numbers? I don't know, yeah. Yeah, so that's that sequence where you go 1, 1, two, and then you keep adding to the, the, uh, the 2 before. So if you wanted to get, generate the Fibonacci sequence, you, what? you take Fn, which is the nth, you add it to Fn plus 1, and that will give you Fn plus 2, right? Yeah. So, for example, you've done videos about this. You don't need to go through this again. Yeah. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Yeah, right. exactly. So these first numbers are all Fibonacci numbers. One is Fibonacci, two, two is Fibonacci, three. This is the Fibonacci sequence, right? And all I did was to get that answer, that's 70, was it 72? I took the first one in each row, so one of these numbers, yeah. and added them together, and it gave me your answer. And it always works. Right. Okay, but why is it working? So show me, show me what my four were. It was okay, one, so, three. So one, yeah, three, so that's four. Mm. Uh, 13, so that's in, that's now given us 17, and then 55, so that's 72. Okay. Always works. This is something called base Fibonacci. There's something called the Zeckendorf decomposition. So what do I mean? So let's have a look at any number. It can be written in terms of Fibonacci numbers. So let me give you, take the number 27, for example. Okay, I can write the number 27 as 21 plus 5 plus 1, right? I can certainly do that. Yeah. And these are all Fibonacci numbers. This isn't unique. There's other ways in which I could write 27 in terms of Fibonacci numbers. I could write 13 plus 8 plus 5 plus 1. I could do 21 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, right? There's, there's lots of different ways I can do it, but there's something special about this first one. Now, this first one, what you'll notice is that none of the Fibonacci numbers that appear in it are adjacent to each other in the Fibonacci sequence. As in like consecutive? Yeah, exactly. So if I look at this one, so this, this decomposition I've written here, 13 and 8 are next to each other in the Fibonacci sequence. And in this one, well, actually, you know, 3 and 2, for example, are next to each other in the Fibonacci sequence. This decomposition, this, this particular choice, which is unique for 27, is called the Zeckendorf decomposition, and it's a decomposition in terms of Fibonacci numbers in which there's no two adjacent ones. And can every number be made in that way as well? Yes, right. yes it can. And this gives rise to base Fibonacci. Sorry, I can probably squeeze this in there. Though. You've got, I've got another piece of paper here. Okay. Heard about all the usual bases, right? So, you know, base base two, which is binary, base 10, which we're used to using, all the different bases. But there's also something called base Fibonacci, which is based on this Zeckendorf decomposition. 
So let me just write down the, the few of the Fibonacci numbers. I'll go up to 21. You could carry on, of course, going that way. And if I want to write 27, how could I write it in base Fibonacci? Well, I know it's got what if I do the second door of decomposition, it's got one of 21s, hasn't got any of these, hasn't got any of these, eight, it's got one of five, it's got no threes, no twos, and it has got a one. So this is how you would write 27 in base Fibonacci. Once you've used one of these numbers, you hack it off the total and see what- Exactly. What... And actually, Brady, you've just touched upon something that's really, really important about the Zeckendorf decomposition and why it exists. To create it, you use something called a greedy algorithm. So, what's, 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 so what do I mean by this? And this, this can explain why you never get to adjacent ones. So, so let's give an example, right? Let's imagine that there's a sweet shop, right? Me and you like sweets, Brady, you know, especially when our, when our wives aren't watching, right? <laughs> so, so, right, we like sweets, right? Now, so there's, there's, let's say there's 100 sweets in this sweet shop. Then I go in first, right? And I'm greedy. I'm going to buy as many sweets as I can, but it has to be a Fibonacci number. Go in, there's 100 sweets. I'm going to buy as many as I can. I need to find the largest Fibonacci number, okay, that's below 100. Okay, that is 89. Okay, so I go and I get 89 sweets, right? Now you follow me in and you're a bit annoyed because there's not as many left now. And you go in, there's 11 left now, right? And you go in and you buy as many as you can. And it's got to be a Fibonacci number, greedy algorithm. So how many can you get? You can get eight, okay? And we can keep going like that. Now, there was no way we could have ever had an adjacent number of, of, um, of Fibonacci numbers, why? Let's take an arbitrary amount, any number of sweets in there. I go in first. I buy as many as I can, and it's a Fibonacci number. Let me call it FN plus one, okay? I buy this many. Then you go in, okay? And there's less now, right? But you buy the biggest number you can, but let's say you get the adjacent Fibonacci number. Let's say you do that. Let's imagine that's possible. And you're gonna get FN, right? And together, that means we've got this many, which is... A Fibonacci number. Another Fibonacci number. But I took as many as I could possibly take, right? And if, it, and if it was a Fibonacci number to start with, that's how many you would have taken. That's how many I would have taken. So that proves that it's impossible. It's precisely this greedy algorithm that proves it's impossible to get the, to, to pick up those adjacent numbers. And that's really the basis for the Zeckendorf decomposition and uh, why you get these unique representations in terms of Fibonacci numbers for any number. And this is the core of this magic trick as well. So how were these lists created? next to each Fibonacci number for this to work? What's the problem? So every number is, if, 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 it's got, if, it's, if it's got an entry one in here, it will appear in that line, is basically the idea. So let's look at, let's look at 27, right? So, 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 so I would claim that, I'm gonna claim 27 is gonna appear in the one row. Yes, it does. It's gonna appear, it's not gonna appear in the two row, it doesn't, or the three row, no, it doesn't. It will appear in the five row, I'm claiming. And yes, it does. So you can see it's gonna it's gonna pick out the second of decomposition. This is exactly how it's working. It'll pick and it'll be in the 20, 21. 21 row there as well. Which so it literally picks out each one, and that's how it works. So it's the magic with the with the second of decomposition. I just think the trick's not that magical. What do you mean? Of if, course, well, it's because mathematical you, magic. <laughs> It's not that magical if you have to carry around this list with you and, and require that much work and information from me. It detracts from the trick, but I love the mathematics. Well, I, I think you're too fussy about your uh, presentation on your <laughs> tricks, mate. Have you used this trick before? I think I did it on my daughters and they weren't impressed either. I don't know. I think it's good. Really hope so. I hope it's definitely not finite, but I don't know if it's infinite at the moment. What I do know is this: this this next one of the sequence is at least as big as uh, 2015. At least as big as that. <laughs> it, it, you're right. You're right, Randy. You're right. It's way bigger. It's actually way bigger. 